wasn't a crisis per se, but it was an opportunity for me to start asking some important questions about where my life was going. And maybe you've wondered some of the, about some of those same questions. I began asking, is there more to life than just this? Where is my life going? Am I happy living the life that I am living? Can I imagine living the same life for the next 40 or 50 years? And then there was the important question, am I living my life's true purpose and full potential here on earth? I'll never forget the time that I was having coffee with a dear friend of mine and with tears in my eyes, I said to her, my life is not my own. And she responded by telling me, Teresa, that makes sense. You have two small kids at home. You're managing your job, your home, the, ki the courses you're taking. Of course it's hard for you to have time for yourself. It wasn't so much about having time for myself as it was about questioning how I was living my day to day. Was I living my everyday according to me, Teresa? Or was I living my everyday according to what everyone else expected me to do? It was definitely the latter. I was always trying to be the good mom, the good wife, the good daughter, the good daughter-in-law, the good sister, the good friend, etc., etc. The good mom was one that brought her kids to play groups, read to them every day, dressed them up in cute clothing, only let them watch educational videos, and fed them healthy snacks. And this I knew because the moms at the playgroups were always vocal about letting you know which activities you should be putting your kids in and which snacks you must be feeding your kids. And it was always backed by some research that they knew about, of course. Then there was the fact that the good mom stayed home with her kids and didn't put them in daycare. And this I knew courtesy of my in-laws with little comments such as, Oh no, you can't put the kids in the daycare. You have to watch them. <laughs> then there was the good wife. The good wife was one that had dinner ready for her husband every night, had clean clothing ready for him to wear, and sent him to work with a lunch in a paper bag. And this I knew courtesy of my old school mother-in-law, again with little comments such as, Make a this for Peter for lunch. He likes it. This is a lummy. Or take, take this home and cook this for Peter. He likes it, this one. <laughs> then there was the good daughter. And the good daughter was one that called her mom every day. Wore makeup, but not too much makeup. Looked nice, but not too nice because... Whoa, where do you think you're going looking like that? Who do you have to impress? You're already married. In trying to please everybody else, I wasn't pleasing myself. And this often left me feeling angry, frustrated, offended, voiceless, and upset. So turning 40 was my reason to start making some changes in my life because I couldn't continue on living my life according to what everyone else expected me to do and renouncing myself. So what did I do about it? Well, the first thing I did was I asked God for help. God, please help me to figure out if I am living my true purpose and full potential here on earth. And God responded by telling me to Meditate. Meditate? What did I know about meditation? But luckily for me, I had a meditation center close by my home, and my spiritual mentors, as I like to call them, helped me to get started. Meditation was intense. Sometimes they like to joke with me and say, Ha ha ha, remember when you used to cry all the time? Yes, I remember. And that's because connecting with my spirit and connecting with God deep inside me was like nothing I had ever experienced before. You see, I was brought up to believe that 
God was at church and not deep inside me. Nevertheless, they introduced me to different New Age authors and other key figures in the mind, body, and spirit arena, such as Wayne Dyer and Marianne Williamson. Then I went to a conference where I was introduced to EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, or otherwise known as tapping. So I bought the book and began tapping every day. Tapping allowed me to release a lot of anger, frustration, and resentment I had toward different people in my life. I tapped about my husband. I tapped about my mother-in-law. I tapped about my sister-in-law. And I tapped about my brother-in-law. Oh, those in-laws! Who would have known that tapping on ancient Chinese meridian points could be that therapeutic? Then there was Louise Hay, and she had me practicing daily positive affirmations in the mirror. This is what she calls mirror work. It was very difficult for me at first to look at myself in the mirror, straight in the eyes, and say, I love you. I love everything about you. But the more I practiced, the easier it got. I love you. I love everything about you. You are whole and perfect just as you are. And the more I practiced, the more I began to believe in what I was saying. The ultimate reclaiming of my life was when I left everyone and everything to go and live and work in Milan, Italy for six months. This, to say the least, made everyone who ever tried to dictate what I should be doing in my life very, very, very upset with me. It took every ounce of courage and tenacity within me to go against any cultural, familial, and societal expectations that I had been living by as a mother and as a woman. There were comments like, Oh my God, is she okay? Is she depressed? How is she leaving her kids behind? Oh my God. The details of that experience are a whole other talk. However, it remains a reminder for me being one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do to never negate myself at the expense of others. To always give my true opinion about things. Mom, maybe Peter should learn how to cook. To always share my true thoughts about things, even when it may not be the same view as the other person. Ma, I like to look nice for myself and not for what others think. To share my true thoughts and emotions about people's actions instead of holding them in and being resentful. Honey, it really hurt when you said that you couldn't be there for me. So with all the changes that I made, I was able to realize that I am unique. There's only one Teresa. That I'm whole and perfect, just as I am, and that I have something to offer the world, one person at a time. So those feelings that there must be something more to life than just this, were replaced by these three things. One, a true inner happiness and gratitude for all the blessings in my life. Two, an inner love for myself. And three, the ability to always live my life according to Teresa by honoring and respecting myself first. Thank you so much. <laughs>